First up, the man who wrote Fire and Rain, which thanks to global warming will soon be the only two weather patterns left, <laughs> Mr. James Taylor. It is now my honor to introduce a man who has won many things, but has yet to be given a Kennedy Center honor for his saxophone playing. Please welcome the 42nd President of the United States, President Bill Clinton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am honored to be here to congratulate all the honorees and to pay special tribute to my friend of many years, James Taylor. Like so many of you, at least of a certain age, there are places my family and I go, there are experiences we've lived that will always be tied to James and to his music. His influence on our lives goes way beyond his contribution to the American Songbook, because for five decades, his melodies and lyrics have literally become seams in the fabric of our national life. Maybe part of the reason is his music resonates with so many of us because of its unique empathy. It transcends geography and class and race and you name it. It seems as though, for those again of a certain age, that his gifts have just always been there for us. But there was a beginning. It is our good fortune that in 1968, James Taylor got his big break. At just 18, James moved to London to play his music for anyone who would listen. Something in the way she moved Looks my way, calls my name. With the ever serendipitous Seems help of good friend Danny Cooch Korchmar, James's demo made its way to Peter Asher, head of the newly formed Apple Records. So impressed was Asher, he had James audition for a couple of musicians with a vested interest. And I feel fine anytime she's around me now. And so it was that she's young James Taylor became the first non-British act to be signed to the Beatles' Apple Records, with his heroes playing backup on his songs. Please welcome Grammy winner Darius Rucker. If made of someone pretty. 
The next period in James Taylor's career produced that gentle sound that matched the sensibilities of the time. In 2009, I was at one of the countless benefits he's done over the years to promote peace and the environment when he sang his wonderful song about the Irish Troubles. During so many difficult times, whenever and wherever, we badly needed reminders of our common humanity. James Taylor was our friend. He has been, and he still is, the sweet and steady voice of our better angels. But the wisdom behind that unbelievable voice was hard-earned. James Taylor once said, I never would have guessed at 17 that I'd be alive at 70. Addiction stole 20 years of James's life. But through the darkness and glimpses of light, he kept on singing and always gave us his truth. But don't let me be lonely tonight. I like to swing right out of that tune and jump right into the next one. Well, I'm a steamroller, baby. I'm bound to roll all over you. The 1970s saw the rise of the singer-songwriter, and L.A.'s troubadour was its home. Yes, I'm a steamroller. That's now, where James baby. found his people and his stride. I'm bound to roll all over you. James had entered an era of collaboration, and it suited him. So good night. I've you always been a working musician, he'd say, a member of the band. And rock -a -bye, my sweet baby James. But his singular talent was undeniable. Well, he is his generation's touch. poet laureate. Won't you let and me forever, down when he sings, me. we sing along. Yes, and rock -a -bye, oh, sweet baby James. And now, performing with James Taylor's band, The Section, nine-time Grammy winner, Sheryl Crow.
musical tribute to James Taylor continues with Garth Brooks, plus more star-studded performances coming up. The Kennedy Center Honors, sponsored by the new movie, Lion, now playing in theaters everywhere.